dad was a, um, he was a player. Let's just call it what it is. It was crazy. He was on the state with this woman. My mom could read every thought, everything he had to think about her. So it just freaked him out that my mom was able to say, yeah, you know, she was wearing this, and you talked about this, and you were thinking that she had a great voice, but she wasn't really very pretty. My mom was right there with him. Ow. Right? Double out, you know. This is Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide. And we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention. I think he was trying to get that guy's attention, husband there. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome. Uh, Two things we uh, live by around here. One is that everything we read about in the Bible is still happening today, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. And number two, God is speaking to me, you, the church, and the world, and we're missing most of the conversation. So that very intriguing connection between mom and dad where mom allowed by God to hear his thoughts and what he says when he's with others. Uh, Beth and I just got back from a uh, couples retreat. It was Catholic couples, 800 of us. It was called the Good News Cruise, Father Mike Schmitz. It was, it was an amazing week, just amazing week. So we come back, we just like literally walked in the door and I, I, I need to post a, an episode and I, I go into my files for episode 299 because I saved some stuff and I didn't know which one I was going to use. And I open, and the computer doesn't go to 299. It goes right to 173. What was 173? Well, it had that story in it. And I thought, okay, we're back from, you know, marriage retreat time. And I go into this special relationship that Julie's mom and dad had, and it just kind of opens up the door to a lot of things, all kinds of good things here that are going to come up in this episode. Uh, Well, let's start first, of course, with Julie. Julie, like yours truly, once upon a time was on the radio, but sitting in a room by herself and seemingly talking to herself uh, wasn't the thing for her. So I'm a therapist centered here in town. Gotcha. So I deal with families in crisis. Pour me some too while you're at it, would you? Oh, yeah. Would you like some? It's not very exciting. It's Diet Pepsi. Oh, gosh. Diet Pepsi. Not even fat Pepsi. Gee, I know. It's not even fat Pepsi. Okay, what's your view on this? The Bible, written, stories from forever ago. But there are people today now, stories here. Like if the Bible was to be written again, or addition to, or, you know, I mean, there, it's, it's a continuum. It's not just then and over. That's why Touched by Heaven is here. I agree. There is, what do they call it, public revelation and private revelation. What we're talking here is private revelation. Public revelation is what's in the Bible and what we believe to be true. But all the rest, these stories, how many people have I heard from talk about how they've come back to their faith because of these stories, that they're stronger in their faith because of these stories. Is it playing a role for people? Oh my gosh, yes. Thank God. You know, thank thank God. God. So you never faded? You were one of those? Did you stay pretty strong even through high school, college, all that? Um, I, I faded in early college, but then I jumped back in later on in college when I saw that things were just... If you don't stick to the straight and narrow, things can get a little out of hand. And when you go to college and you're away for the first time, you can see, whoa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those 18 to 22 year, uh, uh, that, that's a weird four years, man. <laughs> it really is. It's totally because it's like you're kind of cut loose and you're like, okay, go. And you're like, okay, what am I doing? I'll follow all of you. Oh, yeah. wait a second. This yeah. doesn't feel right. I'm kind of an adult now, but this is new. Yeah, <laughs> all this stuff is so new. Much new. <laughs> it's all brandy new. So okay, so you got through all yeah. that and kind of stayed pretty close. I've always that feeling of never being alone has been my whole life. I was driving on the expressway on the Eaton's Expressway out of Chicago, heading north, and it was traffic, and this semi was getting really wonky and uh, started like kind of moving my way. And it got really uncomfortable because the car started like clustering up and the truck was coming right at me. And I was in the center lane and I did not touch that steering wheel. But my car moved from the center lane over to the left and then further to the left into that, that, you know, right next to the partition, the concrete partition, that lane that's not a lane. Yeah, that concrete barrier thing. Yeah. Yeah, right next to the barrier. And And my, literally my steering wheel turned my car. I looked in my rear view mirror as I kept driving and I saw like 
a 13 car pileup. It was a disaster. And somehow I was able to divert that. I don't know. Were you in the front of it or in the middle of the behind? Where, where, where were you I in was, it? I, in it, I was in the center lane about three cars in from the front. So it's happening in front of you and your car starts it's happening. Moving. It start, Yeah, it's starting to happen in front of me and I'm seeing it and I'm trying to get out of the way and I'm slowing down and I don't know where to go because now I've got somebody on my rear end. I've got people on either side of me and somehow my car maneuvered itself over to the other lane, over to the partition, up and around. And I looked back in my rear view mirror and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I literally had to pull over. I was shaking so hard. So it's like, you know, that expression when that song came out, Jesus, take the wheel. That's exactly how it felt. Are you, are you conscious that you're watching it happen or is it after the fact? I am, I am aware of it as it's happening. And that you're not doing it. And I'm not doing it. Because the skeptic is going to say, well, you obviously were turning the wheel. No, my hands weren't even on that wheel at that moment. <laughs> well, trust me, because I was freaking out. And so yeah. I was like trying to like grab stuff. I, yeah, my hands, but I could feel the wheel like turn. And it wasn't me. Isn't yeah. that insane? Like literally the car moved, the steering wheel moved. I did nothing. And I heard on the podcast, somebody had something similar where they went through a car. Oh, we've had numerous people going through cars and seeing the driver pass right by them. You know, whereas one, as Michael put it, he says, you know, it was like suddenly I'm, I'm Casper, the friendly ghost and, and car, because I'm seeing his car pass through my car. Isn't that just, yeah. wow. Yeah. But I mean, there's no way I don't believe that because I know that there are so many miracles out there and so many things that we can't explain, nor should we even try. I mean, it's, it's larger than us. It is. But but it sure is it sure is inspiring and i downloaded a whole ton of them when i went to new york recently um i had all your podcasts downloaded so i could listen to only happy positive things as i was traveling <laughs> <laughs> happy positive things that sometimes make you cry you know but they're happy I know, positive i well, yeah. do i get teary eyed yeah. because these are so beautiful so i've had a few of these um my mom passed and i was singing in the bathroom a song that my mom and i used to sing together and i liked the line because it's that song put your hand in the hand do you know that song? Yeah. Put Which, your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Yeah, who had the that, hit? Who had the hit? That was, uh, the, um, who was that? Oh, I could Google it. I'm not sure who was that, that was, but I loved that song as a kid. And there was a line in that song that is, my mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. Yeah. She said, there'll come a time when you'll, there'll probably be room in heaven. So... I sang the song in the bathroom as I was getting ready and I was singing that particular line. And then I stopped singing. I got ready. I was running late. I got in the car. I turned on the radio and the song was exactly on in exactly that exact spot. (laughs) She just started picking it up from where you left off. She just picked it up where I left off and we just kept singing. It was, and I'm, my tears were streaming down my face because mom and I were still singing. Uh, the biggest hit looks like it was done by Ocean. Ann Murray also had a hit with it. And this is where it was really freaky. And I, this is when I sent you the letter on too. And, he, and if I'm repeating it, I'm boring you by telling it to you. No, too. no, I, I, I don't even remember what was it. I get a lot of emails. So yeah, you, I'm sure you probably get inundated, yeah. no doubt. So this is always, I, and, and sometimes I don't want to know too much, to be honest with you, because I just kind of want to hear it like the listeners hearing it too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Ain't this fascinating stuff? Isn't it good? It just, it just, I could, I could just spend my whole, I could go to school for just this. Amen. I love this side story. My mother was um, really, really sick in the hospital and my dad was a, um, he was a player. Let's just call it what it is. And so when my, they were engaged, they were, they had broken up, but my, they were still very much in love. And my mom was in the hospital and they didn't think she was going to make it. And my dad had met some woman on who she was the operator of some company that he was calling. So he asked her out on a date. And while he was in the date, like he was thinking all these thoughts about her, like, wow, you know, she's got a great voice and you know, all this stuff. My mom the next morning said to him, wow, I had the strangest dream. You were on this date and I was like in you and I could think your, I could hear your thoughts. I could feel your thoughts. And my dad turned white. My mom was on the date with him. 
Ow. Right? It was crazy. He was on the state with this woman, and my mom could read every thought, everything he had to think about her. My mom was right there with him. Where God every now and then would show her something in particular. Yeah. So this in yeah. particular, did that do anything for dad? Did it did it change him? Well, it, it made him realize that they were connected in a way that was larger than him. And it brought him back to the engagement and to the wedding. And they, they married and had the three of us. So it just freaked him out that my mom was able to say, yeah, you know, she was wearing this and her hair was like this. And you talked about this and you were thinking that she had a great voice, but she wasn't really very pretty. And my dad was embarrassed by that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So there's that one. Did he talk about that story too, or just her? Yeah. Yeah. No, they both did. He, he, yeah, wow. he did too. Totally freaked him out that she could read his mind. So, of course, he moved on the rest of his life wondering where else she was going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your nose clean, Dad. Mom can pop in. Wow, that's an interesting gift to have. Yeah? Isn't that crazy? If you don't mind. if When your mom yeah. was uh, saying... Was she accusing or just kind of like, like you just said it? Well, here's what I, here's what I know. I mean, how did she do it? No, it, it was not at all accusing. It was, wow, I had the most extraordinary dream. It was so real. And it was. She didn't know until, until he went white and said, Bitsy, I've got something to share with you. So then she knew. Yeah. Pretty crazy. That's crazy. That is crazy. And since I talk about how everything in the Bible is still happening today, where exactly does the wife hear the husband in the Old Testament or somewhere in the Bible? I, I don't know that that happens. But I do remember a prophet stealing the war plans of, I think it's a Babylonian king who can't figure out how it is. The enemy is figuring out what he's up to. Memory serves. I think that's in there. And if an angel can spring Peter out of a jail, opening all the doors and all that, kind of, I think they're capable of taking steering wheels. My father also had that like creepy ability with his mother. He was an only child. They were always aware of where each other was. They were just connected in a, in a little larger way. And my dad and I kind of had a little bit of that going on too. So when he passed away, I was in Florida. He lived in Florida, then in Mount Dora. And I was, uh, it was in the middle of the night and I was just a mess. You know, I was, uh, it was awful. Anyway, so my dad passes away and um, I'm in bed and my phone lights up from the bedside and I look at it and it's like coming from my husband or so it says. And, you know, it's a text and the text said Bibles. I'm like, all right, thanks for sharing. Why are you sending that to me? So I texted him back and I said, why did you text me that? And he said, text you what? And I said, you text me the word Bibles. And he said, no, I didn't. You're tired. You've had a lot going on. Just go back to sleep. Everything will be fine in the morning. I said, okay, you're right. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. So I went back to sleep, and then my phone lit up again. And I'm like, oh, come on now. So I pick it up, and I look at it, and it said, um, heard the way important search start began. Say that again. Heard the way. Important search, start began. Start began. Going back to that initial, well, what is Bibles about? Well, interestingly enough, he had taken on reading the Bible and became very religious in his last part of his um, life. He, My mother passed, and he connected with a woman from Houston who was very religious. And my dad sat and read the Bible with her every night. Okay. Okay, what's the next one? Right. Heard the way. I am the way. Heard the heard the way. That's Jesus. I heard the way. I am the way, the, the way. life. And he certainly was on a, a hunt for Jesus. Start began. I, I mean, I could turn that into Bible too, you know. Start began is beginning. In the beginning, that's Genesis. I mean, you know, scripture scripture is key. I, I would say that uh, as far as an important search goes, I, th I think we're learning from your father the, how important the Bible was for him and uh, his turning towards Christ. So a few days later, I was back in Chicago, and I was talking to my sister, Katie, who was there with me. She was back in New York, and we were talking on the phone, and it was their cell phones. We were talking on their cell phones, and all of a sudden, my cell phone went completely dead, and at exactly the same time, the house phone rang, and the house phone never rings. I never answer the house phone. Who has a house phone anymore? 
But I thought, well, it's ringing. And since Katie, I lost her, I might as well just answer the phone. So I did. And she was still talking. The but now, call, but now she's on the house phone. And the phone call was continuing uh, with her. And just as that was happening, my, I looked down at my cell phone because here it's in my hand. And I looked down and there's my dad's face. His contact came up with his, with his smiling face. And so I took that as dad called and he said he made it. Let's pause right about here. Then more with Julie here on Touched by Heaven. Quick Patreon shout out. Thanks, Joe. Joe Vitling is a uh, part of our Patreon family and uh, believes in what we do here. Believes in uh, promoting the is now of as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Part of the reason part of our tithe goes to your ministry is or your podcast. It's it's people like me that are searching for answers and those answers help. And, and for me, it's as simple as that. And, and something like that, if there's anything I can do to help, I will. Thanks, Joe. If you also feel blessed by these stories, then they do fortify your faith and bring you in a little closer. Uh, you can go to patreon.com and join the family or come here to uh, this episode, 299, and just click your way through. Patreon.com and search for Trapper Jack. Thank you so much. All right, so let's get back to Julie here on Touched by Heaven. And we started talking about the afterlife. Okay, where's dad now? You know, he's had this big transformation at the end. Is, is he in heaven? Uh, is he in that place that uh, is called purgatory? Is there a purgatory? My feeling was that my dad was letting me know he made it. Yeah. Now, leading up to that, my dad, like I said, was a player. And my dad didn't live the purest of lifestyles. I mean, I love him madly, but I he, hear you. Yeah, he, I he, he likes the ladies. The Bible says nothing unholy gets into heaven. Well, if I die today, am I holy? And if I'm See, not, the whole thing. you know, if I'm not holy, then there's got to be a holding place somewhere where Jesus continues to reveal himself. And we, we work on our, self, yeah, we work right? on our spiritual self. Yeah, 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 yeah. So but I, you know, I still wonder if Jesus died for our sins, then how is it that we aren't holy? Of, of course, no, 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 no. it, uh, it doesn't say because Jesus died, I automatically get holy. I have the opportunity pick up my cross and, and follow Christ of um, choosing holiness. I certainly can choose it. St. Paul references the burning away of impurities. There's a place in the, I think it's in Matthew 5, I'm guessing here, maybe. Anyway, there's a place where Jesus says, and you'll be taken before the judge and handed over to the guard who will throw you into jail and you'll stay there until you pay every last cent. Okay. You're in jail. You're not in jail forever. That would be hell. And in heaven, there is no jail. There's got to be a place where you're paying it off, and then you right. get out. That's what we consider purgatory. Um, many will say the word purgatory is not in the Bible. True. But then either is the word trinity, which certainly is more important than the word purgatory. Okay. Okay. And because I know, I've and always I, believed yeah. that there are levels. I think my mom's at a higher level than my dad. I think my dad barely got there. Well, there are levels of heaven and there are levels of purgatory. And it's interesting that how uh, we've had people on the podcast talking about purgatory experiences where they're going through these levels and it gets brighter and brighter the closer you get to up there. Meanwhile, down at the bottom end, it's pretty dark down at the bottom end of it, but at least you're not in hell and you will, you know, you're in the pipeline for heaven. And again, I know this is, hey, people will argue about this till the end. We'll all know someday, right? We'll all know someday. Right. Uh -huh. It's all good. I, it felt good. So what are we walking away with? What's our big takeaway today, Ms. Julie? Our big takeaway today is that, one, I made a new friend, which is always fun. And two, there's somebody on this planet who I can align with and listen to what you do because I think that's fabulous. And I'm going to walk away with that my dad is in a good place. I like that. Well, I love what you're doing. You are so nice. Thank you, Julie. We appreciate the firm grip on the wheel today by angels. The angel drive, I mean, taking the steering wheel. How many times have we heard that? Then to see what's going on in the rear view mirror and to pull over shaking. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful moment. And then that very intriguing connection between mom and dad, where mom allowed by God to hear his thoughts and what he says when he's with others, obviously an attempt to keep him close. It's all so fascinating. And then the whole topic of purgatory, yes, no. Uh, and then I started thinking about, wait a minute, there's, there's, there's an interview I haven't run yet. 
And I started looking through, and I saw one of my favorite people just sitting there in a segment on purgatory that I haven't run. Joyce, our favorite prophet out of Houston, back in episode 166 and 143. Powerful, powerful prophet. Because what makes this really interesting for this episode, Catholics and Protestants, Joyce grew up Catholic and switched out to Protestant. And purgatory is one of the areas that she and I got into uh, months ago. And this would be the time to share her thoughts on purgatory, her thoughts on uh, nothing unholy can come into heaven, her thoughts on what happens to our soul when we die. Is it immediately purified and we're ready for heaven? The purgatory and that in between. But the Lord is really, really uh, opening my eyes to this place of purgatory. It's like the outskirts of heaven. It's not heaven. Nope. It's not heaven. And he said, people think that it's easy to get into heaven. And you know what they forget, Trapper? They forget like when Jesus was talking to the disciples and the disciples like, man, this teaching is hard. Who can be saved? Well, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. And Jesus was like, people have forgotten. It is not easy to get into heaven. Just because a person gets saved on their deathbed, they get just what they prayed for. They get saved from the fire. They get saved from the fire. Now, you grew up Catholic. Uh, mm -hmm. While you were Catholic, did you understand that, believe that, or was that always kind of a question mark for you? I got to be real honest with you, and this might kind of freak you out but maybe not because you hear a lot of stuff. But I started getting, I started experiencing those who have passed on and they would come to me. And I was, and I was, uh, and I always put it before the Lord, people that I had never met come to me. I remember one encounter was so real. I was in the spirit. And as I was coming out of the spirit, I tried to grab this young man's hand. Where he was was very beautiful and it was very nice. But from what I understand, it was not heaven. It wasn't fully heaven. It wasn't. But he wasn't in hell either, Trapper. And so when you enter into the gates of heaven, there is splendor beyond imagination. There is splendor beyond imagination. Nothing unholy gets in that place. And there are a lot of people that pass away on their deathbed. Lord, save me. And the Lord does save them. But guess what? The condition of your soul as you leave here is the same condition you have when you get over there. And, and that's, that's an important point there. But, but as you're hearing different things that we do here on the podcast, sometimes about purgatory, that helps you put things together. Then he gives you more information. It confirms what I have already experienced. Okay. You have a lot of shows about it, and I'm listening to it. It's almost like what's happening is that I'm putting the pieces to the puzzle, like the Lord. And I like the way he does this because, like, my motto is enjoy your journey with the Lord. The Lord wants me to have this journey where he actually he reveals. He reveals those different realms to me. And I have experienced people that have come to me and that have actually asked me questions about my walk. Like they're trying to learn about this intimate journey with Jesus here. From purgatory. From purgatory. They're trying to learn. They're still Well, isn't that funny that Lily talked about that, how they are like in school there. They are learning yes. there. And, it, and again, as you uh, had mentioned earlier, we we learn faster here than we do in purgatory. Exactly. If you do not learn it over here, you are going to learn it over there. In slow motion. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, well, it's because we have the body. We, we've got our body as well as spirit. And we, we, we're, mm -hmm. There are things we can learn here that we can't learn there, aren't there? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And I'm like, I'm, I'm making sure I test the spirit by the spirit. I'm like, Holy Spirit, I need you to lead and guide me. This I never conjure up anybody. It's never by my own will, Trapper. It's not. It is all the Holy Spirit's doing. This stuff is real. And it's all about 
who's in Christ. But all, but even but even if you're not in heaven, you're in the pipeline. You're going to get there eventually. It, look, it's people that's in those outer realms, that's in that outskirts for hundreds and thousands of years, man. I am telling you the truth. It's a lot going on out there. Have you experienced the levels that we talk about? Not in that way. Not in that way like, oh, what's the young lady? Uh, you had that episode, Trapper. I think it was episode 142. Talking about Lily. Seeing, Lily? That's her name. Is mm. that her name? Her name is Lily? Yep. Yeah, she's wonderful. No. Yes. Not in the sense in the way that she did. But I know that the farther down you go into purgatory, it's like your state of mind. You know, there's a lot more regret. I've had a spirit tell me that, you know, where he is is not hell and he's not burning, but he's in a place of a lot of regret and a lot of pain of what he could have done and what he did not do. Like, well, I, I thought Lily believe. did a great job of describing how that, where all that chatter was going on, all that noise, all that finger in mm-hmm. each other's uh, faces in that uh, wallowing in, uh, in one case it was wallowing in the, the pain of, of the suicide, but almost enjoying the wallowing, which we can mm-hmm. all do at times, you know, mm-hmm. woe is me and all that. Uh, mm-hmm. and she, yeah, down at that southern realm of, of, of that uh, second heaven, um, would you call it second heaven? Is exactly what I would call it. Mm-hmm. Powers and principalities that rule from the air, that's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. There is exactly what I would call it. And the Lord was actually calling her up to a higher realm. Yeah. He's calling her up to a higher frequency because the higher you go in heaven, the higher the frequency is. And the way that you come out of that, you want to know how you get your soul into a higher frequency? You want your soul to be in the plumb line and be the same frequency as the Holy Spirit. You want to tune yourself to the Holy Spirit, allowing his meditating on his word day and night. It's met in allowing the word to transform you by the reading of God's word, allowing the word to transform you, allowing him to have his perfect work in you, meditating on him, praying. Uh, I don't know if you believe in praying in tongues, but praying in tongues is a mighty powerful gift that the Holy Spirit has given us and allowing, uh, meditating on his word, praying worship is a mighty tool. When you take that word and you allow that word to work itself within your life and you align yourself with heaven and allow your frequency, look, you don't want him to come down to you. He'd already came down, right? We are, we are coming up to him and we are allowing the Holy Spirit to bring us up to a higher realm. You need to go up to a higher frequency and tune in to heaven's radio station. So you're helping me. So your show has helped me understand some things that I've been experiencing. So don't think I'm not tuning in. I'm listening. I'm like, whoa, what did, what, what did she just say? Whoa. Okay, I understand now. It's, it's giving me a greater understanding for some things. Thanks, Joyce. We'll talk again. You know, prophets aren't always real popular. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not. Here's what a prophet does. A prophet isn't just someone who says, here's what's going to happen in a year. No, a prophet from within the church holds up a mirror and says, here it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly, which isn't always well received on one side or on another side. But prophets just speak the truth. False prophets just want you to hear what you want to hear. That's what makes Joy so powerful. Thanks, Joyce. Thanks, Julie. We've traveled around a bit this episode, starting off with that interesting marriage between mom and dad, Julie's mom and dad, and that connection of knowing what dad was up to. Hmm. Yeah. Ouch. (laughs) We also traveled to purgatory and back. Let's see. We've been on the road, uh, dodging cars, been all over the place here. What's your story? You're holding out on me. I know you're holding out on me. Let me know here at touchedbyheaven.net, and uh, we'll make this all happen. All right. Uh, And thanks for the Patreon support again. It keeps it all going, as do your stories. And we'll see you next week here on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack, reminding you that these stories are not figments of some imagination that are somehow connected to the medulla oblongata or the uh, leaking hydraulic suitinator valve of the cerebellum. No, they are not that. Whoa. Okay, I understand now.